Hello everybody. Welcome to my studio. I'm Joanne Rogers. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. So uh, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to wait just a couple, couple minutes for folks to get on and I'm gonna make sure that I am on here on my iPad. So I will do that and just keep an eye, see if there's any comments. As you come on, maybe just uh, send a quick little comment about where you're watching from and maybe let me know, is this the first time that you're watching? I'd love it if you, uh, let me know that. I'm just going to go in here. Hey, Leanne, thanks Hi. for coming. Whoops, whoo, boy, my goodness, that's pretty loud. I had it turned up because I was watching Netflix on the uh, treadmill. I got the treadmill out. So, hey, Jennifer, how are you? Um, so there we go. Now I can see your comments there. So thank you, ladies, for joining. Hi, Sandy, thanks for joining us. And Lori, good to see you guys here. Um, it's, uh, it's snowing outside, so I don't know what's happening because last week we had like plus 14, I think, isn't that what it said when we were, um, thanks Janine, uh, when we were talking last week, Bonnie, wasn't that what it was? Uh, okay, Lori, well, can, you can catch it on the replay, that'd be great. Um, hi Bonnie. Uh, so yeah, it's snowing right now and it's not snowing lots, but it's snowing just as a reminder that winter is really not done, even though we had the first day of spring last week. So, uh, so it's, it's chilly out here. So let me know if you're, uh, watching from somewhere where it's a little bit warmer, where you don't have snow falling right now, maybe where it's melting. Uh, so just a couple of reminders when we, uh, while we get going and wait for folks to come on, it is the last week of celebration. So I'm just pulling up the original little flyer that we had. So hi Ruth. Oh good. Well, maybe uh, we'll try and keep it here, but it might be coming a little bit south your way. So yes, there are some items that are sold out in here, like the ribbon and uh, the wooden elements are sold out and the parcel. Um, the kit, the card kit is sold out, but there's still lots of great items in here in the second release as well in the third release, which is uh, stuff from the annual catalog. So there's still lots available. If you um, have a, a little order that you want to place or if there's something that you really want, you have until Sunday. Uh, I'm going to say if you want to try and get in late afternoon, I think online is open until like 11.50, but I maybe wouldn't leave it quite that that late. Hey Karen, I'm glad you were able to join in. Uh, so uh, so take a peek at uh, what's on my site. I'm going to be posting some things that still have celebration items there. Thank you Ruth for sharing. I love when people share and it also puts your name into the draw for, uh, for things that I give away. So with saying that, we had uh, last week I had a special um, item for people who shared. I still have a package of the ribbon. And so I had a number of people that did share. And so I'm going to uh, choose their name from here. So uh, thank you, Bonnie. Um, let's see. Yes, and actually, when you share, if you can let me know when you share, because if you have privacy uh, set on your Facebook, I can't see that you shared it, and so I can't get your name into the draw. I think I got most everybody, but Jennifer would love the ribbon. Let's see, Jennifer. I think your name might be in here. I'm really giving them a good mix up here. So I have a name. I'll put that down on the table. And the name is Jennifer. So Jennifer Vanderwecken, you won the ribbon. So I think that you must have uh, been uh, putting a little good vibes your way because there you go. So hi, Dorothy, thanks for watching. So congratulations, Jennifer. And then we're also, um, I just wanna show you again what we made last week. So last week we made this card and I was showing you how to adhere vellum to cardstock. And so I'll pull that up a little bit closer so you can see. Um, and uh, we're gonna do it again uh, this week because I didn't, even though it, it the one spritz of water is what we want. Hi, Sheila, thanks for watching from Burlington. Um, I wanna show you again because I don't think I had quite the right consistency on my glue because the next morning when I came down, this was not adhered. So I uh, have adhered it again and uh, I will uh, show you again how to do that. Hey Betty, 
Thanks for coming along. And then this was the original one that I had made, which was a Happy Easter one, which really is, um, it's a much more subtle card than the last one. So I put the, everybody who had a comment, I uh, put into the random uh, Facebook picker, random comment, Facebook random comment picker, I think. It's got a nice big long name. And so everybody's name went in the draw. And I'm happy to say that Sabine Fiedler Munkert, I think is how you say uh, your name. Uh, if you want to message me or if you want to leave a comment, you get to choose one of these and you can send me your address and I will pop that into the mail to you. So, and Sabine, I think that you're in Germany, so I would love to send this internationally so that you can have it. So congratulations. So hi, Judy, thanks for watching. Okay, so what are we gonna talk about today? Uh, my product of the week this week is uh, the Stampin' Trimmer. And so all week I'm gonna be making items with the Stampin' Trimmer and uh, it is one of my favorite tools. It's one that I really, I don't think I could probably do without. I do have a guillotine cutter here that I do a lot of my cutting with, but I can cut and I can score on my Stampin' Trimmer. It fits the 12 by 12 papers just fine. Um, it's got all kinds of markings. It's got 16th inch markings. And uh, so it's really the, what I think one of the best trimmers around. Plus you can replace those blades super easy. So I'm going to point you down and then we'll get started probably on what we're going to be working on. So hold on, let me turn you around here. Uh, do you think it needs to be any closer? Leave me a comment. Let me know a little bit closer than what uh, it is right now. Um, so you can see that my trimmer is here. I don't know if we, when we get closer to uh, actually making the card, if you're gonna want it to see it a little bit closer or not. So uh, Bonnie, that's a, that's a great way to put it. So Bonnie, the Cadillac of trimmers. I like that, I'm gonna have to use that. Uh, it really is. And uh, it's uh, it's similar, you know, to, uh, to the Stamparatus being the Cadillac of stamp positioners. And I think it's just, it's a good sturdy uh, uh, cutter. It's it's got a great lip here. You can cut on both sides up to one and a quarter on this side and then up to 12 inches. This arm comes out over here, snaps into place and actually it's longer than 12. It's about 14 and a half over here. And that just goes back into place. It's got a lock on it so that when you carry it, so this moves up and down, of course, that's your guide, but this little guy up here is your lock. So if you have never used this before, you wanna just snap that lock into place towards the guide, and then the guide isn't gonna go anywhere. These will still move, uh, the score not quite as much as the cutter, but it's not gonna move up and down and, and possibly break on you. So just know that if you're carrying it to a cross or if you're going to a class that that's uh, probably what you want to do. Plus what's great about it, I'm going to do that right now, is it has storage on the back so you can put more trimmers. And let me just see, I haven't opened this up for a while. It's got little arrows right here. Press those in and it opens up and you can put in your extra scoring blades, any extra cutting blades. It looks like I'm a little low on cutting blades right now. And then it just snaps shut. So it's also got rubber feet so that once it's on your table, it's not gonna be moving around. So I thought, okay, well, what are we gonna do with the trimmer? So we're gonna be making a card today that's a stair stepper card. Has anybody made a uh, stair stepper card? So Sheila, a little bit closer. Let's see if I can get a little closer without going too close. How's that? You know, let me know if that's, uh, give me a thumbs up if that's just a little bit better. Yeah, not too bad, I guess, eh? Okay, so what we're gonna be making is a stair stepper card. Do, does anybody know what that is, first of all? And if you do, um, maybe try and explain it to the group before I get going on what we're gonna be making. That. I think you're probably saying that's good, Sheila. I'm getting a thumbs up, perfect. Okay, so we are going to be working with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper here. So, it, well, it was 12 by 12. I have cut this down to uh, four and a quarter by 12, and we are going to score this, and we're gonna score it at, we're gonna start at one and a half. So when I'm doing a bunch of scoring, I'm, I'm going to move from 
I'm gonna hold my paper off to the right and I'm going to move to the left. So the first uh, score we're going to make, we're gonna move our cutting blade out of the way. We just want our scoring, which is sort of the light beige one. I'm going to score it at one and a half. So down, and because the scoring is not a really sharp one, so you may need to score a couple times, but it will be enough to put a good indent into the paper. And then we wanna go three, so one and a half, three, five, seven. So we're on the this part over here. I'm gonna pull it this way so you can see. We're on seven now. And then the last one is going to be at nine and a half, which might be out of the screen by the time you see this. No, it's there. Okay, so nine and a half. So again, those are one and a half, three, five, seven, and nine and a half. Okay. So now I've got my score lines there. I'm just going to close my trimmer and I'm gonna put it off to the side. And I need my phone folder. And I'm going to um, score all of these so that they're sort of like an accordion. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first one. The narrow one, which is one and a half, is going to go down. So I'm creating mountain and valley folds on my lines here. So the first one is going to be a mountain, meaning that when I make it, it's going to look like a mountain here. So my first one is a mountain. My second one is a valley. And lift that up just so that I can score that guy, or burnish that guy, rather. Next one is a mountain. And the next one is a valley. So we've got five different ones here that we're going to be doing. And the next one, hmm, that doesn't seem right. The next one is a valley. That is right, sorry. So it looks sort of funny right now because that's actually a fairly small little card. So again, they're all accordion folds, lots of little Zs or Ws, a W and a V maybe on there. So that's what we're going to do. And then it's going to sit like this. So if you were looking at it, it's going to sit on the table and have a, uh, have a, a wiggle to it like that. Okay, so that's our card. And now we are going to put it together. So this is where you guys come in. So you get to pick because we're going to be working with the floral romance paper. And I said last week, I was working with vellum all last week, and I said that it wasn't quite done when I did my last blog on Sunday, that I still had one more project. So this is the project that I had in mind. So thank you, Leanne. So these are all the very pretty papers. And there's one here that I don't even have a six by six piece of anymore. And I'll just put it against here. So it is so pretty, it is the petal pink. We use this a lot in a class that I had. So there's vellum, that one's vellum, and this one here is vellum. And then we have, this is the front and back of one, and it's got mellow moss, pear pizzazz, and Sahara sand in it. And then this is the front and back of another. So we have leaves, and there's pear pizzazz, but there's two tones. So to me, this almost looks like there's soft uh, sea foam in there too. And then this one here is just the petal pink background and just dotted. Um, and it's not even really dots. They're sort of, um, I don't even know. They're, they're bits more than they are circles or polka dots. So thank you, Maria. So I need you to tell me, first of all, you get to choose from the car, the paper, which are these ones, which one you would like. So it's either this one or that one. So the leaf, the let's call it the light leaf or the dark leaf. So which one would you like? Or do you want petal pink or do you want wood tone, wood grain? So that's what you need to do is, are we doing petal pink, wood grain, or light leaf or dark leaf? So I need you guys to let me know. Uh, Ruth, I'm thinking that might be light leaf. You have let leaf. Uh, just clarify that for me. I'll put that aside, light, light. Okay, we're going with light. Alrighty, so you guys, we're going with that one. Put that one aside too. And then on the next one, I made the choice for us. We are going to go with this one because I don't have any more of the petal pink one. I'll show you what it looks like on there. It looks like this. It's really, really pretty, but I don't have any more. So 
I made that choice for you. So there we go. That's going to be our second one right there. And then I'm going to also do the, uh, the same thing that I did with the vellum to adhere that. So I'm going to adhere both of those right now. Let me just grab my, my tools here and my glue. So um, I'm going to do the vellum first. So if you weren't able to see last week or you didn't catch it on the replay, so what we need uh, to add vellum without being able to see it is we are going to need a sponge that I've cut into sixth. So one sixth, I've taken a sponge that's circular and just cut it with an alligator clip. You need your uh, silicone mat or silicone craft sheet. Hi Pat, you're not that late. And you need some glue, some liquid glue. And then you need a spritzer. So your spritzer, again, thank you, Karen, for sharing. So your spritzer, again, I put the little arrow on there and just one spritz. So this time I gave myself a little bit more glue than I gave last week, but I'm still gonna do only one spritz. I can't seem to ever get that spritz on there. So what I wanna show you a little bit more is what the consistency should be. So last week when we did it, um, there was just a little, you can see maybe that there's some foam in there. Let me, I'll pull this over this way a little bit. So you don't want lots of foam. You want it to be more opaque than you want foam. So I'm just going to give myself even a teeny bit more of that liquid glue. So let me do that here. And I'm going to mix that up again. So here you go. So there's not very much foam in there. There's a little bit and that's okay. Um, so you can't see that foam in there. So sorry, when you guys are doing it yourselves, you'll probably have to see, but less water is better. You want less, 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 less water. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to, and there is a, there is a darker side to the vellum and then there's a lighter side and we are going to put on the lighter side because that's where we want it to stick on the back. We want the darker to be on the uh, what we see. And I'm going to go all around the edges first. I'm gonna try not to get any glue on the first. I really should have had a little less glue because I have less room now to put it onto my silicone craft sheet. So I've got a pretty good covering there. So these sizes are, let me just look at my piece of paper here. Let me, I'll put this down. I can't look in two places at one time. So I'm just going to glue that down. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna try and move it around a little bit. But because it's not as liquid as um, the liquid glue just by itself, you're not gonna have as much time to move that around. So there you go, there's your piece, and I'll hold that really up uh, high because you can't see any of the little dots in there. And this, I think I can already tell that this is going to adhere much better than that one last week. So that's how you adhere your vellum. So I'll just throw this stuff, I'll put that back in here. So this, I don't have any clue where I got this little tin, but if you have a little container that you can keep that sponge in, um, we had a, uh, a team meeting this, or a team stamping party actually, this Saturday. And one of the ladies, Anita, in my team, she washes her sponge and she went and washed uh, mine for me, which was great. I don't tend to do that. And uh, after I've used it for, oh, I'm usually good for, Hmm, a few months anyway, before I toss it out. So, uh, but she washes hers and it did seem to work. So maybe I'll do that. You have to wash it while it's still wet though, in order to get that glue out. So there's a, there's a tip for you. So we have that guy down and we have this guy down and then I'm gonna get you the measurements here. And I always put the measurements on the uh, Facebook Live. So I put it in the description. And I also put it, when I always turn my Facebook Lives into YouTube because I know YouTube videos, because I know there's a few people that don't catch, uh, don't aren't Facebook people. And so that way they're able to see as well. And I always put all of the descriptions and all the supplies and the measurements. And I usually always put the measurements on my, um, on my blog as well. Okay, so we've got that done, or I'm gonna leave that and put that to the side. Now we're also going to use this one, but we're gonna do some cutting. So here's one poor little guy that I have been trimming away at. So um, 
Uh, yes, Cheryl. So Cheryl's asking a question, and this is good for anybody. If you don't like to see the comments in there, if you just swipe to the left, the comments should go. So then you should be able to see a little bit better. So if you uh, do that, then you won't see comments in there. Okay, so, and that, I don't know that that's going to give you a bigger picture. Let us know, Cheryl. Does that give you a bigger picture? So what I'm doing here is there's no framelit for this. So we do have to fussy cut. And so I'm just using my paper snips and I'm cutting around, leaving just a little bit of a border. This is very easy to cut. Again, vellum has a real plasticky kind of finish to it. So it's very easy to cut and I'm leaving a very little border. There's little um, fronds in here, I guess. I'm not worried about those. I'm getting mainly the leaf. And I'm going to do this one and then, so because you don't want to watch me cut all of these out, I have some already pre-cut. Um, but I do want to cut this one out because this is a nice big guy. So if you had that piece of six by six like I have, you can get a lot of these cut out. And it's I'm fine with there not being a punch of framelits because sometimes when you have those, you don't tend to get as many out of them. So here's... That guy right there, it's really quite pretty. So there's one. And also don't throw out these little pieces. Cut around the edge, like even if it's straight edge over here, you're still gonna be able to use those. So I, um, I want to show you, I think I have a couple tonight too. Okay, let me grab these guys. Look how many I have. I was a busy little girl. So this is what I mean. I've got a few edge ones here and some will work better than others. Like this one will work just fine because he's an edge. Let me get that out of the way. <laughs> he's an edge going out that way. So we've got that. Now we have to have some choices. So we're going to be using the Humming Along Kling stamp set. So this is in the occasions catalog and we're just going to use it for the words. So what I need you guys to let me know is what words would you like us to use tonight? So there is thank you, hope you feel better really soon, and wishing you an amazing birthday. So we need the first three people that can jump on and let me know. That would be wonderful. And we'll go with whichever one you want it to be. We have one feel better soon. What do we have for the next one? Oh, we, now we have an amazing birthday. Oh, this, I think I've given too many choices here. Oh, two birthdays so far. Oh, three birthdays. Okay. Sorry, Leanne. We're going for the birthday this time. So this is a cling. So uh, if you haven't seen the Kling um, stamp sets yet, they are, uh, they're great, but they're very sticky. So here's how I didn't really show you. This is how I tend to store mine now, is I store mine right onto the plastic of the stamp case. And um, before I put them down there, so these are stuck really well. When I get them off, I usually take my nail and go underneath. And if that doesn't work, then I go in with my pokey tool or my take your pick tool. Because you don't want to, this is so um, strong, you can actually rip the foam. So you don't want to do that. So you have to t uh, treat these with lots of love. Okay, so we're doing amazing birthday. And we're going to use Fresh Fig, which is that purple color that's in here. At first, I thought that that was Blackberry Bliss, but it's not. It's Fresh Fig. So we're just going to stamp, wishing you an amazing birthday in the middle here. There we go. I should probably move that really far away. And we're going to use the Story label punch. I'm getting it right this time. I'm taking, leaving out the book, even though I still think it should say storybook. I don't know why. I guess because when I'm a kid, that's what you hear, right? Storybook. So I'm just going to punch that out and have a little bit of a frame there. So there. Now we're going to put our little embellishments in behind there. So Let's sort of play a little bit and see what we can get. So this one, we may not even need to have more than one back there. So there's one. I'm gonna use this little guy, which is cut off. He's gonna go maybe up here. And then 
Oh, and we have another suggestion from Bonnie. So putting a small piece of washi tape on the edge, on your saying on the edge of the uh, cling, right, uh, Bonnie? That makes it a little bit easier to lift them off. Sorry, Judy, I'm out of the camera range. I am. Yes, you guys need to let me know. Now that I went smaller, it's, uh, it's I'm going to have to work a little more out there. Sorry, is that a little bit better? Okay, so I think I'm going to go with this guy here and maybe these guys here. And I'm going to glue those in behind. So, still out of range? Oh my goodness. Okay, um, now I'm gonna go, how's that? A little bit better? Yes, on the image side. Okay, good Bonnie. Thank you for that tip. So I'm going to use snail for this because um, this vellum is going to stick just fine to the snail. So I'm going to give myself, oh, if I can get my snail out of there, I'm going to. I'm going to stick it in behind here. I want to always be looking at it from the front so that I see what is going to be showing. So because of that edge, I want to just make sure it's in behind and I don't have any snail right there. So I'm gonna go right up to the top with my snail and try that again. Keep that guy up there. And then this fellow here or this one, or are they the same? They're not quite the same. I think I'm going to use this guy here. So we have quite quite a lot of foliage around there. I don't think I want to have any more. I think that that's probably enough. Okay, so, and I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this. If I can just grab them here. So I don't want little guys. I don't need little guys there. So I'm going to put dimensionals on the back and I'm going to put it right over top because when it's right over top, I'm a little bit more assured that my vellum isn't going to go anywhere just in case that snail happens to let go. So I've got not really in the best position. I'm gonna put one more on there. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to put a little bit of our petal pink. And we were having a debate about this the other day. Do you think that this is pink? Or do you think that this is peach? So um, what do you think on that one? So this petal pink, I'm gonna hold it up as close as I can and not move it around. I realize that might be a little hard for you to see. In fact, probably looks almost white there, but it is to me like really peachy. And so it's not really petal pink to me. It's not pink. So Ruth agrees, it looks like peach to her. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little piece of this petal pink and I'm just going to give it onto the border here. And then I'm going to put my amazing birthday right over top. Actually, I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna put the next pieces on first. See, you all agree with me. You all say peach, I, I agree. So what we're going to do is we are going to place these guys here. And I never did give you the measurements, did I? Okay, here's your measurements. So this big guy here, is four by five and a quarter. And your piece of vellum is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. This guy here is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And your vellum is three and an eighth by four and an eighth. Let me push that a little bit further. Sorry, I'm, I think I'm gonna move this just a little bit this way because I don't like working off the screen there because that's very frustrating for you. So let me know if that's better. So what we have to do first is we have to decide, we have a decision here, we have to decide which way is our card gonna go. So we can have the card, we can have them go this way. Here, I'll pull this out. You can have, this one has to be standing up. This guy here can go this way or it can go this way. So landscape, which is this, or portrait. What do you think is going to be more attractive? So this is what it's going to look like once it's done. Okay, that's portrait or landscape. Stand up. So Jennifer, I think you mean this way, right? Landscape. Oh, we've got one landscape, two landscapes. So we want like this. We have three landscape, four landscape. Okay, so we're gonna go like this, you guys. So, oh, two portraits. Sorry, Maria, now, oh, now you guys are making it difficult. I have equal. Okay, Cheryl, you are the tiebreaker. 
Uh, oh no, now Carolyn, we need one more. Landscape, it is landscape. Okay, so this is landscape, so we are gonna go. And why you're able to do that is that this here is exactly the same width as your uh, card. So it's four and a quarter. So what I do is I put my glue, my snail, on here. So I'm gonna put snail on there because if you put it on here, you may go above the line and you don't wanna do that. So the snail goes on to the third panel. Okay, and because we're going four and a quarter, we're going the same width, I can put my snail all the way out to the end. So I'm just going to put that right down into the crevice there, into the valley, and glue that down. Now for this guy, I can't do quite the same thing because there's a little bit of uh, vanilla showing here. So I have to make sure when I do this one, that I am inside where that is going to sit. Okay, so I'm gonna give myself a fair little bit of snail there because this is a larger card. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna put it right down, but I think, I think I'm gonna go that way. And I don't even really know why I went that way. It just looked a little bit nicer to me. So I'm just gonna glue that down so that when these are all done, this is what it's going to look like, okay? I'm gonna to have to firm up my, my, um, um, my what? My creases, there we go. So that's what it's going to look like, but we're not done yet. So we're gonna put this guy on, and then we're not done either. I needed you to give me some more input because we need to decorate it a little bit. So we're gonna put our words here, and I wanna put them down here, somewhere close to the middle, hopefully straight. I'm thinking that isn't quite straight. Let me just pull that. I didn't push it down really hard, so there we go. So there's that part. Now, here's where you need to give me some help. So, or tell me what to do. So we are going to be using the Beauty Abounds. How many people have this set of uh, thinlets at home? Yeah, I see that, Ruth. I see it's freezing, but I'm not exactly sure why. I don't see that I'm getting an interrupted um notice here so i'm sorry ladies i'm not sure why that's doing it um it has to be my internet connection and that's one of the challenges with living out in the country most of the time it's good but not always so yes pat i know you have them because i borrowed them for our retreat so these are the coolest thinlets i think around and there are so many in here there are 21 dies in here and some of them are repeats but you have to really look because they're very very similar but not quite the same so these two little guys here for instance are very similar but they're not exactly the same so i've already cut out and i've cut out this big one here in different colors and so you have to tell me what colors so we have a choice we are going to and i'm not going to put the whole thing on we're going to cut them out so i can go petal pink and i'm thinking about my biggest one i can go petal pink i can go mellow moss mossy meadow mossy meadow mellow moss is an old color uh fresh fig um, or this is soft sea foam and I chose soft sea foam because I really like it and I think that it goes really well here with that light green. So, okay, so let me know. We're gonna go with the first person this time. So what color? States broadcast interrupted. So yeah, it must have something, I'm sorry ladies, it must have something to do with my internet. Are you still there? Fig, okay, we're going with fresh fig. And we might use another color too, but that's going to be our main one. Oh, it looks like fig is really the popular one. So how to use these guys. So you can cut them. So I've often cut them apart and that's what I'm gonna do right now. And when you're cutting apart, you want it, I'm gonna pull this out. When you're, oh, I knew that at some point that was going to happen. So my phone was going to ring. So I'm hoping that my husband will jump upstairs and get it, he did, good. So when you're cutting, you wanna think about which one are you using? So if I'm gonna use this one, I wanna retain as much as possible the, uh, the beauty of this one. If I'm using this one, I wanna try and retain the line here. If you're careful, you can get a lot, you can get all five of them cut out. So I am going to cut along here, and it's just a little snip 
And if you cut very carefully, you won't be able to even tell. And I'm also going to cut right along here. Whoops, cut a little too far. And I'm going to cut along here. So I do this fairly slowly. And then I'm going to cut along here as well. Okay, so we have our one big butterfly. We have this guy here, and I just need to trim him up a little bit just to round him up a little. So I've got him, and then I've got this guy, and the one we are going to use is this guy right here. So we're going to put him on, and we're gonna put him on so that he's up here, so it looks like he's just in behind the foliage and on the leaves. And then we need a different color for here and I'd like a different color from our choices. So what would you like? Would you like, here we have, so somebody else, can we, I have no idea, Cheryl, if the new, if the new catalog will have the butterflies. I hope so. Um, I will have an idea. We will know what's being retired uh, in uh, three weeks, three weeks. Two and a half weeks, I guess. Mossy, okay, so we're gonna, holy smokes, you guys are in sync. Oh, we have one peach. I think we might still have a peach. We're gonna go mossy. And we're not, we don't wanna go with the same guy because then that would look too, too much the same. So I'm just going to cut off this one down here. And he looks a little bent out of shape anyway. So, oh, look at that. He actually already did sort of cut there. So I'm just gonna go carefully there and I'm going to round off my edge. See, and nobody will know. Okay, so we're gonna put him up here. I'm gonna put that one there, and then we just need one little one. So let me pull out a couple little ones and we can decide what the color is going to be. Um, where do I have? So I've got, I've got a peach one. He almost gets a little bit lost on there, doesn't he? Um, he's actually, he is, he really wants, to, he's jumping, he's flying onto that card. This is hard to do when I only have one hand. Uh, here's the guy I want. So there's a green one. The green one really does show up well, but let's see if the fig one shows up better. And do I not have one little, I don't have a little peach one. I've only got one that where he's going the other way. I think the soft sea foam, you can't see him. He gets a little bit lost on there. So I think we'd better go with a dark one. So uh, I think maybe we better go with our uh, fresh fig, right? Okay, so I'm going to put those down. Let me get these guys out of the way here. Those, I have butterflies everywhere. I better be doing something with those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I could put these on with a dimensional, but I am going to use my liquid glue so that it sticks really well. And I'm just going to put it along here and I'm going to put a couple dabs here because I do want these um, uh, wings to bend out just a little bit. So I'm just using my hand to bend them out just the warmth of my hand and I'm going to again see where I'm going to be placing it here and I want it to be oh now I've got a nice little bit of glue there I want it to be inside the card so it's going to fit in the envelope okay so let me try and get him back a little bit more here there that's probably a little bit better so there he is he's looking off that way we're going to do the same thing with our mellow moss I'm just going to put it I don't know why I just want to call this Mellow Moss. It's not even the same color as the old one. Does anybody still have any of the Mellow Moss paper? Um, it's from several years ago when I first started. So that's almost 17 years ago now. That was one of the colors. So I'm just going to very carefully give myself a dot of glue on this guy here. And we have one more little thing to do and then we'll be done. Okay, so you're gonna need to let that sort of sit up a little bit. But the last thing I wanna do is I want to add one of, ah, Janine, I'll bet you do. Cheryl, you have some too? Um, I'm just gonna add one of the frosted flowers embellishments and we're gonna put it down here, I think. And so what color? I think the white's gonna get lost. Do we wanna go with the peach or do we want to go with the fresh fig? So you guys can choose. And again, first person gets it this time. Um, hello, Ellen, how are you? Thank you for coming and joining. 
Uh, fig. Okay, Sheila, we're going to go with the fig. I think I have something on the back of that. I do. Look at that. I have a, a pink rhinestone. So I'm going to put the fig right over here, and it's self-adhesive. And there is our card. So I'm going to show you it this way here. And then I don't think you're going to be able to see it really well. But one thing you have to do with this card is you have to make sure that this little guy kicks out and is standing up because this is not thick paper. So the thick paper uh, doesn't tend to, the thick paper would stand better, but it's not 12 by 12. So one thing I have done in the past to make it a little bit better is I have put another piece of paper actually in behind here just to give it a little bit more substance so that it stands up a little bit better. So there's your card for a birthday card. And I want to bring in and show you the difference because I used similar but different colors on the one that I made. And so the one I made is more petal pink. And look, I'd made it actually very slightly different um, because this is up a little bit higher. This one's a little bit lower because I think too, this I'm gonna need to move because that won't fit in the envelope. We'll have to go with a larger one. So let me know which one your, is your favorite. The one that we made today with the um, bold colors on it or the one that's much softer. So let's see how many people we can get. And one thing I also did on this one, you'll notice, is that this one is portrait instead of landscape, which is what you guys uh, decided. So, um, and I did use soft sea foam here and the petal pink. Okay, so today's, today's bold, both. Okay, petal pink, very pretty, but like the bold colors. And now that we've done it, I think they're great too. So I really like having you guys tell me what to do. So uh, again, if you share, and I really do appreciate when you share uh, this with your friends and with fellow stampers, um, I will post, and let me just bring you back here too. Here we are. Oh, you're back. Um, so uh, yeah, I think probably the bold color, um, Maria, is the one that we are. So it seems I'm still going in and out, ladies. So I really do apologize for that uh, tonight. So if you want more information, you can find this at www.designwithjoe.ca. I'll be posting this and uh, loading it up into YouTube and sharing it on my blog tomorrow. I always have a little bit of a challenge getting myself uh, up to YouTube because sometimes it takes a little bit of time. But remember, celebration goes until Sunday, so you still have a little bit of time to get uh, some of your favorite items if there's still some items that you uh, don't have. And it has been a wonderful celebration this year. Stampin' Up! has had uh, the best response that they have ever had. So it has been great. So thank you very much for joining me. Oh, and I do have to tell you, I'm having a pop-up Facebook Live over on my uh, Design with with Joe VI Peeps page. So that's my group and you have to go in and you have to ask to join and I approve everybody, but it's just a group where you can go and I will post, um, different things. I have deals there. I have tips there that I don't show anywhere else. And uh, what uh, my pop-up live is going to be Saturday morning. So this Saturday, the 30th at nine o'clock in the morning, and I've got an Easter treat for you. So hopefully I'll see you there and I'll post it and let you know more, but thank you for joining me and have a great evening. Bye-bye.